Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board-certified criminal defense lawyer, coming to you from Minneapolis with our content genius, Michael Rivers, at the helm. So we are reacting today to the news that uh, Nate Diaz is charged with second-degree battery in New Orleans. But before we get to that, uh, let's talk about eSign.com. eSign.com is an effective way to remotely do business. Let's say you're in another state, and all of a sudden you get an arrest warrant in New Orleans, you need a lawyer fast and you need to get this done quickly. So what you do, you hire the best guy you can find, probably would be me, but anyway, uh, you go ahead and you download the app, you get three free signatures a month, you email your retainer, you sign it, e -sign, you e-sign it, because if you don't e-sign it, no one signs. And after you e-sign it, you now you have your lawyer, you get the deal done, you go turn yourself in. eSign.com, an effective way to remotely do business. So. Okay, now Nate Diaz is a UFC fighter, and he's known for to fight anybody. And so, why you would mess with somebody that is very skilled at what they do is just beyond me. So let's let, let's take and this is all on video. So let's just and he's claiming self defense. He's got a good lawyer. Theory of their case is that he was aggressively being pursued by. A, a bigger guy uh, by the name of Rodney Peterson, who was also a trained fighter. And, and that comes into play, and we'll talk about self-defense and and what's going to need to happen. So let's before we do that, let's just watch a little bit of the fight and see what happens. So you'll notice that he's got him in a headlock. And there's other fighting going on around. So that's the context in which this is being played out. So there's not just something in isolation. And it's what he perceives and whether that was reasonable or not. But he's not pounding on him. And, and the thing about these videos, they're never all that great because these aren't professional camera people taking these videos, right? And this is very typical of kind of the evidence that we receive in these kinds of cases. So you see he's got him in a, in a headlock and, and he takes him down to the ground and disables him. But he doesn't do anything more. Now you see he's out. He's totally, he's totally out. There's another angle to this, and let's see if we can get that. See, if you look at the beginning, if you look at the beginning, Mr. Peterson's hands are up like this, and it's unclear if they're up in like a submissive position or if they're up in I'm going to get you kind of position. So he chokes him out and he basically just has him go to the ground. Now, Mr. Uh, Peterson says he's he sustained some kind of head injury, but you know I don't know if that's true or not. Um, of course, he's going to say that because he he's he's going after a target. And one of the things that these, whether you're an athlete or whether you're uh, you know like an MMA fighter, these guys are, are kind of targets when they go out. That's why they. Why do you think May Mayweather's got all kinds of bodyguards? Are who wouldn't love to have Mayweather just kick the shit out of you uh, wrongfully, and then all of a sudden, you know, then you sue him because you know he's a deep pocket. So that that's what happens in these kinds of situations. Now, so after after this, they charged Mr. Diaz with second degree battery, and when they did that, they issued a, an arrest warrant. So what did he do? He turned himself in. And, you know, and you have the initial appearance. What do you do at the initial appearance? Two things. One, they read you the complaint on the record, you know, what you're charged with, and usually waive that. And then they de determine bail. In this case, uh, they issued a $10,000 bail, probably in a no contact, I I'm guessing as well. But 10, and so, and when we talk about bail, what are the two things we talk about with bail? 
uh, risk of flight and danger to the public. And, it, and if you see how he actually takes him down, he does it with some care. He doesn't just slam him down to the ground. And so there's probably he probably doesn't have any criminal history or very little. So the risk to the public is it's a very isolated incident. And then he turned himself in. So he's not if he's if you turn yourself in, you're probably not a risk of flight. So so that's what's happening with him. But let's analyze this in terms of self defense. Now, if you the only thing that's different in a stand your ground state is not the reasonableness of your actions, the reasonableness of the force used or any of that, or whether you perceive your the perception of the danger was reasonable. All that kind of stays the same. The only issue in a stand your ground state is whether or not you have a duty to retreat or you can stand there and protect yourself. I am kind of a fan of the stand your ground in so much as, you know, if somebody's going after you and you have a duty to retreat, if you turn around, you know, and 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 you start running away, your back is to somebody that's trying to attack you. Is that reasonable? So, and the duty to retreat only really applies if it's reasonable to do so. So, you got somebody coming after you. If if turning around would cause more harm to you, then it's not reasonable to retreat, right? And in a stand your ground state, the perception of the danger to you has to be reasonable under the circumstances or what a reasonable person would think and then you can only use a reasonable amount of force and in this case i think that i think this is an excellent example of somebody disabling their opponent without going overboard you know he rendered him unconscious but that was a move you know you see him do that in in the ring all the time and so and he didn't go beyond that you know and he and he didn't pummel the crap out of him which he very well could have done. So, and one of the things you're going to want to notice or take note of in this melee is that he's trying to get away from the hands flying and he's not being any part of that. So there's Nate Diaz and he's trying to get away from the fight that just started. And if I'm the defense lawyer, you see this Mr. Peterson's See his, I mean, he's zeroing right in on, on Nate Diaz. And look at his posture. I mean, he, it's a very athletic posture. And 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 here's the other thing. So Nate, Nate Diaz is a professional UFC fighter. This Rodney Peterson is also an MMA fighter. Apparently he's got 13 wins. And in the context... You know, if somebody keeps moving forward towards you as you're trying to get away from the crowd, so one could argue that he that he's already retreated. And given the context of everything going on, you know, and I'm sure I'm sure there will be more context when they talk about what the two of them had uh, said to each other. So this is if you, if you look at this guy, he's not a little guy. This clear whoever did this thing is clearly uh, in the Diaz camp, and having him just hold him there until the guy is rendered unconscious, I think that's I think that's reasonable. I mean, he, he, the guy's not hurt. That gives you more context than I think the first video did. Do you think it was reasonable? I mean, I think that was an exercise of reasonable amount of force to disable. And the guy's a big guy, and he's an MMA guy, so he he's not like he's just picking on some little kid. You know, some p little pipsqueak who's just giving him shit. This is an MMA fighter against an MMA fighter. And that's the other thing that, that the court looks at in, and the jury is supposed to analyze when uh, analyzing the concept of self-defense is, are you meeting like force with like force? You know what I mean? It's like if you shoot somebody who's just got their fists, arguably that is an excessive use of force. Or, but a knife with a knife, a fist with a fist, a gun with a gun. Uh, and here he got MMA, MMA. That, so he's got a lot of things going for him. I would bet you to a hole in a donut that this will uh, ultimately wind up um, either in a trial in his favor or get dismissed down the road. You know, I'm surprised that they actually charged it out uh, so quickly. 
And, and here's the other thing about self-defense. If you, he will get a self-defense instruction, and guess what? Self-defense is presumed. In other words, it's up to the prosecutor to prove he didn't act in self-defense. And who's going to second-guess him on this? Anybody? Any reasonable juror, I don't think, would. So this has just been our, our reaction to Nate Diaz getting second-degree battery charges against him in New Orleans. And, and so what that means is, you know, it's, it is a felony. Um, he's maximum eight years in prison, $2,000 fine. But typically, you don't get the maximum, especially if you don't have any uh, criminal history. So even if he is convicted of this, I, I don't. I don't suspect he's going to go to prison because it's not even. It's not a weapons charge. It's not, and it's really not that egregious of an assault. I mean, he did lose consciousness, and so that's what raises it to the felony level. So we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Make sure you subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, sign up for Patreon, and we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please, is that my goal?